16 minutes past eight. Now, I was promised this morning, uh, a very special guest in studio with us, uh, Malas Elam, the Ethiopian ambassador to Kenya, Malawi, Seychelles, and Comoros, uh, joining us in studio. I believe the correct uh, uh, introduction is Your Excellency. Welcome to Capital FM. Santa Sana. Great to have you with us. My pleasure. It, it has. I've never had an Ethiopian ambassador. I've been doing radio for 20 years, so I'm very excited. You're the first one, I, uh, first Ethiopian ambassador I've had in, 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 um, uh, on my show. So thank you. Great. Thank you very much, and I'm really honored to be your guest as well. Uh, Capital FM is one of the most refined media houses in uh, in, in Kenya, and wow. I'm really a fan of you. Thank wow, you, Farid. Wow, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm a fan of you too. That's mm-hmm. great. Uh, we have so much to get through this morning, and I think uh, you know that, that people maybe don't realize uh, the. The, the the real sort of tied history between two countries that is Kenya and Ethiopia, which goes back obviously to 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 colonial, pre-colonial times, and obviously um, um, you know after the colonization of Kenya um, and the relationship between two very strong leaders that is Mzee Jomo Kenyatta and of course uh, Heri Gabriel Selassie as well from Ethiopia. There was obviously a relationship between the two countries that but was born from two individuals. Am I right? I, I agree with you, but uh, the, the people of Kenya and the people of Ethiopia uh, had uh, very strong ties that dates back prior to, to to the time that they have existed as, as nations. We have uh, common people uh, uh, along their uh, borders. We have the Borana in Ethiopia and you have the Borana uh, uh, in Kenya. You have the Gabra, you have the Somalis, the Burjis, you name it. I mean, you know, we are an extension of one to, to the other. Right. Ethiopia is an extension of Kenya and Kenya is an extension of Kenya, Ethiopia, honestly speaking. Right. So those people along our common borders have served as a bridge than a barrier. So the relationship dates back to prior uh, to the independence of Kenya. That's incredible, actually, when you think about it. So so almost one and the same type of people. Now, I have been fortunate enough to visit Ethiopia a number of times in my life, Mm. work-wise. I worked a lot with DSTV and Mnet and and also Supersport, so I've I've gone in as a producer to to film things as well. And I have to say, one of the most beautiful countries, one of the warmest people, and uh, really, truly, just just when you you land in... When I landed the first time in Addis, I had this feeling that I was home. It was a very bizarre feeling, but I felt like I was home. There is something very warm about Ethiopia. You're known for your warmth. You're known for your welcoming uh, nature as well as a country. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Farid, for the kind words about uh, Ethiopia. You know, the, the relationship with Kenya is so unique. Uh, it's so unique in a sense that uh, we have uh, been able to avoid those issues of uh, visa uh, f- over 50 years ago. For a Kenyan to go to Ethiopia is like going from Nairobi to Mombasa, Kisi, or or or, or Kisumu. Uh, we, we have signed a defense agreement 50, over 50 years ago, wow. which is also very, very peculiar to, to 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 Kenya. This is very historical relations, and whenever you you see a Kenyan in the streets of Addis, people would be surprised, and you feel at home. The only question that I could ask you is, how is uh, Poltergat and how is uh, (laughs) Sherit? That's how it is. That's a good friendly rivalry we have with Ethiopia as well. Well, you know, in the absence of um, Ethiopian and Kenyan athletes, you can imagine what uh, long-distance running would look like. In fact, many agree with me that it is tasteless to have a race without Ethiopian and Kenyan athletes, be it in Boston or London or Berlin. Right, right. And and of course, that great rivalry that goes back to uh, Heli Gabriel Selassie and Paul Tergat. No one will ever forget those two. That was like the the, the iconic pinnacle of, of running. You know, when we think of history of long distance running, these two athletes were just incredible. Well, this, these two athletes are uh, very giant in their own rights. But the relationship between Ethiopian and Kenyan athletes dates back prior during the time of uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Kipchoge. Mm-hmm. Keeps, um, the, the, the founding uh, Kenyan sure. uh, athletes. Ke- yeah, he, he was Kenya. yes, he was training uh, uh, the famous Ethiopian athletes like Maruz Iftar and many many others. Of course, uh, Poltergat and 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 uh, Haile Gebre Selassie, the legend, the living legend in Ethiopia and all over the world, have really made athletics more interesting and very attractive as well. That's true. I actually had the opportunity years ago to to interview uh, Haley Gabriel Selassie on a rooftop in Addis mm-hmm. uh, for Supersport and it was an incredible, I mean you you really knew when you meet him you're in the presence of greatness, you know what I mean? And I know it's the same with Paul Ter- Tergat as well. Sport is a big thing in Ethiopia. It uh, is and life. Not, and not just running. It is life. Forget that. I, I remember my first trip 
uh, I was filming in town and you just see all these runners at Mescal Square mm-hmm. getting ready for the morning at 4 mm-hmm. or 5 in the morning mm-hmm. but sports is huge be it football uh, be it long distance running cross country running things like this why is sports such a big thing in Ethiopia what would be the reason that Ethiopians just love sports you know Ethiopia has been uh, the founding uh, country of the uh, Confederation of African uh, Football right. together with uh, Egypt and, and the Sudan and then uh, S- S- South Africa when we come to the athletics, athletics is not just entertainment in Ethiopia. It is life. Mm, mm. You see, wherever you go, you see hundreds and thousands of athletes running. And that is how, despite all challenges we have, that is one of the entitlement of Ethiopian as a people to hoist national flag and uh, raise the Ethiopian anthem higher above many other rich countries mm. in the world. Mm, mm. So sport is everything. Sport is economy. You know, you see the kind of investment that people have, people from the athletics uh, fraternity has, have in, 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 um, in the country is so immense. So they see mm. how sport is, is, is not only an entertainment, it's life, it's economy. It really and is. it's reputations as well. Absolutely. They yes. are the Ethiopian <laughs> ambassadors all over the world. I mean, we claim to be an ambassador of the federal government, <laughs> but the true ambassadors of Ethiopia are the Ethiopian athletes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that is a unifying factor for Ethiopians across nationality, across religion and, and, and age. Right. You, there, there is a real sense of pride. I mean, Ethiopians have, have settled all over the world. There's a big diaspora um, across the globe. Um, but but there, there's a sense of pride that I've, I've met, w- whether you meet Ethiopians within Ethiopia or Ethiopians that have left Ethiopia to work or live elsewhere. The sense of pride of, of home in Ethiopia. People really do feel, uh, no matter where they go in life, aligned to where they come from. Mm-hmm. Um, what, is that? What, what, is, what is the driving force behind something like that? Is it, is it just that love for home? It's it's quite incredible. You know, the, 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 I, I don't have the exact figures, but we have uh, close to three million Ethiopians uh, uh, across the world. And uh, there is a saying that my prime minister said: "You can take an Ethiopian out of his country, but you cannot take out Ethiopia from himself." Mm, mm-hmm. That's true. So when we grow up and when we, we, we went to school, we are always told about the sacrifice. Of, of our forefathers to their country mm. and we listen with tears. Mm. Mm. You know, Ethiopia has maintained its independence for thousands of years. People don't really realize with, that. With sacrifice. And people don't realize that. It is the only independent country in Africa. We have fought wars after wars and wars after wars. So, whenever you go to school, and in fact, it starts at family Mm. at a family circle mm. then it goes into community and schools so the the kind of indoctrination that you get from ill your elders and the kind of history that you are told by your uh, seniors is about the importance of Ethiopia above and beyond yourself right 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 so and wherever you go as the prime minister said you can take out an Ethiopian from his country from Adisaba Adama Hawassa or w- 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 elsewhere but you cannot take out Ethiopia from his heart yes that's true, huh? Whatever they are, they cry, about, they cry about Ethiopia. They yell about it, the well-being of Ethiopian Ethiopians. And do you think it's it's that independence where a, a lot of that where the pride comes from? I mean, you know, people people associate Ethiopia with Italy, etc., but they don't realize it was never colonized as a country. It was never colonized. We are proud Africans, which has never been colonized. Mm. In fact, Ethiopia was a beacon of hope for black people. Mm. Remember the Battle of Adwa in 80s, 90 something. It was the first African, black African victory over white. Mm. So Ethiopia is not only a pride to Ethiopians, but it is a pride to all black world. Mm. Mm. That's incredible. Amazing. Incredible. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, uh, Ethiopia. Of course, we're going to talk about Lapset, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the transport corridor that is going to connect uh, a large part of Africa as well. And, of course, we're going to touch on something maybe a little bit difficult. We're going to touch on something as, as well when we come back. We've got some great Ethiopian music lined up as well. It's 26 minutes past eight. Good morning. Saying, mm. saying Ethiopia, my pride. You are a cardinal ah, of civilization. It's exactly what we were talking about. Yeah, yeah. It's exactly what we were talking about. Wow. Lahun Gassasa is his name. You can introduce yourself. I've actually... Lahun Gassasa. I've seen him here.
Mm. Um, I actually and, went. Uh, he, he is a he is a very prominent Ethiopian f- singer for over fifty years. Now he passed away like twelve years most ago. Most popular of his generation. Yes, I went to the museum. He, we call him the king. When I went, I went to the museum and saw Lucy. Yeah, that was one of my first visits there. Mm. The, the bones of the lady. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, man, I really want to go back. Yes, he is the king of Ethiopian music. Okay, great. We'll do that now. Mm. We use this to talk over, yeah. Mm. Tilahun gets til ta- Tilahun gesese. Tilahun Gasese, the song is called Ethiopia. Now, he is uh, regarded as the most popular of his country's golden age in the 1960s. Uh, they call him Yukuze, the king of Ethiopian music? Yes, Tilahun Gasese is, is the king of Ethiopian music. There right. was no modern music without Tilahun Gasese. Really? And he's saying, Ethiopia, my pride, the cardinal of civilizations. Right, okay. We have, if, if you're wondering whose voice that is, uh, this morning we have in studio with us the Ethiopian ambassador to Kenya, Malawi, Seychelles, and Comoros, Meles Alam. Uh, and uh, we've been chatting about Ethiopia, sports we've talked about. Uh, of course, one of the big football teams, St. George, right? St. George, George is the big. and one coffee the, and yeah, many, many others. Yes, also. yes. Uh, Ethiopian coffee. My goodness, you've just made me think of Ethiopian coffee. I went to a place called, I'm, I'm going to probably pronounce it wrong, Il Geshefe. Well, well, as you said, uh, Ethiopia is a mother of coffee, <laughs> yeah. and uh, we have quite good number of uh, coffee types. One is 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 Irgachefe. Of course, the home uh, t- town of of, of uh, coffee is called uh, place Kafa in the western part of Ethiopia. Right, right. I I actually went uh, to to a coffee growing area. I can't remember where now, but the coffee ceremonies themselves, how endearing. Uh, they are the actual ceremonies, the authentic ceremonies. Uh, and I had a, uh, there's a coffee uh, shop that's opened at uh, one of the malls here. Tomoka. Uh, yes. And I had well, one of the owners here and I was asking him, I told him they should serve popcorn with their coffee. Yes. Uh, like they do in Ethiopia. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, now we're talking all things uh, Ethiopia this morning. Let's uh, talk a little bit, uh, touch on a slightly difficult uh, topic um, here. And that is um, the Tigray uh, issue. So for those of you who are not uh, fully aware of what's happening, I'll just give you a bit of a background. The Tigray conflict uh, began uh, this month in the Tigray region of Ethiopia uh, and has um, sort of, um, uh, the word would be, um, you know, become more more or less of a crisis. Uh, I think many people don't really understand uh, what is happening in Tigray. And I think maybe it'd be better than us reading. As I was explaining to you earlier when we met, you get different takes from different media houses. Maybe you could tell us exactly what's happening uh, in the Tigray region and why it's so, why it's becoming such a, such a, such an issue. Thank you, Farid. Um, Look, the government, my government, is undertaking a law enforcement action in the region of Tigray. The the, the Ethiopian region of Tigray is is, um, in the northern part of Ethiopia, geographically speaking. It's home to uh, Tigray Tigray speaking and uh, other other, other, uh, people as well. It's the center of the Ethiopian history. We can call it a soul of Ethiopian civilization. The Aksum, Oblisk, and many, many other civilizations are also lo- located uh, in, in Tigray region, which is very uh, important. Mm-hmm. To the ongoing uh, uh, peace-enforcing actions uh, of the government in the region, let me say a th- few about the context and gen- the genesis of, of, of the matter. His Excellency Prime Minister Dr. Abi came to power uh, in April 2018 uh, as a result of uh, public uproar and protest for uh, not less than two years and uh, the struggle within the ruling party called uh, EPRDF. Since he assumed power, uh, the Prime Minister has undertaken a raft of reforms uh, diplomatically, politically, economically and, and, and socially. Diplomatically, as you know, the deadlock between uh, Ethiopia and Eritrea came to an end mm. three months after he assumed power. He was able to go to Eritrea, and the Eritrean president, His Excellency Isaiah Saforge, reciprocated respro- by uh, visiting uh, Addis. The war, the no war, no peace situations came to an end, and that really helped to change the peace dynamism in the Horn of Africa. Absolutely. The peace between Ethiopia and Eritrea was not only confined to these two countries, but P- Eritrea was able to have peace with, Djib- with Djibouti, peace with uh, and Somalia. And um, my, my prime minister was a peace builder, and uh, that's why he received the Nobel uh, Peace uh, Prize. Mm. He's a champion of peace in the region, honestly speaking. Politically speaking, Immediately after he assumed uh, office, uh, quite a good number of political prisoners were released. People who were uh, condemned to death were pardoned. Dissident elementals were 
able to see their families, their capital after 30, 40 years. Oh Armor groups who have been to the bush for ne- lo- not less than half a century have been able to re- be received in the capital to go for uh, peaceful political uh, contestations. I can cite and write volumes about the political uh, reforms. Economically, you know, in 2016 and 17, Ethiopia was not only on the brink of civil war, but our f- friends and, and neighbors like Kenya were really concerned where this country is heading to. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Economically, we were collapsing. But under his leadership, we have been able to take homegrown economic reforms and uh, the economy really revived. And Ethiopia uh, has been able to, to, to really survive the turmoil and, and, and uh, the trauma. Socially, I can cite, when the prime minister was undertaking these reforms, the remnants of the people who were in power for 27 years have been using every resource they have, every resource at their disposal to scuttle and, and, and uh, undermine the reforms. Mm-hmm. When this anti-peace, reactionary, uh, rogue elements were trying to scuttle the, the, the reforms being undertaken by the prime minister, his choice was not to go to conflict, to go to uh, war. He was doing anything and everything to bring those people on board, to address their concerns and to address their regrets. Mm. We have been sending elders to the region. We have been using the religious leaders and celebrities like Haile Gabriel Selassie mm. Uh, mm. To, 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 to put things into, into, into the right uh, track. The response from these uh, elements was contempt. The patience and, and, and tolerance of the prime minister was uh, taken as fear. And the last straw that broke the camel's back was uh, the attack on the Ethiopian National Defense mm-hmm. Forces uh, of Northern Command mm-hmm. in Tigray region. I actually read about that yesterday, yeah. That was the last straw. And these people have been on the, t- on the trench for not less than 20 years. Many of them have really spent the best part of their life protecting the well-being of Ethiopians and the territorial sovereignty and security of Ethiopia. So that was a treacherous and heinous act Mm. against the people and government of Ethiopia and the Ethiopian National Defense Force. And the last red line was passed by the TPLF cliff. What does a prime minister do as as commander of the Ethiopian armed forces when your boys and girls were attacked? when the arms installations are looted. Mm. And the biggest, when the constitutional order was put into stake. Mm-hmm. Now the government is undertaking a law enforcement uh, operations in, in the region, and it has three major uh, objectives. One is ensuring the uh, rule of law uh, in the region. Second, um, restoring constitutional order uh, uh, in, the, in the region. Uh, last but not least, protecting and caring for the well-being of the people of uh, mm. Tigray. Uh, mm. Now we are uh, on the, th- th- the second uh, the law enforcement uh, actions which began like three weeks ago in Tigray has three phases, as I said. Uh, the second uh, one is already uh, completed. Uh, the third will be uh, in, in the final phase, which uh, aims at bringing the fugitives and, and, and the clique uh, to justice. Uh, mm. So this is what is happening uh, in the region. I know there are some reports which consider it as... Uh, as heavy-handed. Uh, if you look at the Western media, uh, there are a few publications and, and online publications that will say it's, it's quite heavy-handed. And I was going to ask you, what, what would be the response to that in terms of the criticism that the government is receiving? You know, the, the government, if it, it has to be blamed, it has to be blamed for being so patient, waiting to this extent not to take uh, lawful actions against this Tags. The government didn't want to be dragged into conflict because we, as 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 as, as a country, have gone through civil war sure. conflict with our neighbors, sure. and we know what war is not through documentary films or movies. We kn- we lived with it. Yeah, sure. Terminate. And and the yeah. prime minister has has been, you know, in in the security establishment. So he he knows the value of peace. Mm-hmm. We didn't want to squander any minute to go to war. Right, but but what, but you, when you're pushed against the wall, what this is there, obviously there has to be some sort of response now, and that's what's happening. It is true. Yeah, it is true. So the the, the government is 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 acting. There are uh, of course reports that it is a civil war. It's not a civil war. It is law enforcement actions against very few 
tags of the former uh, TPLF uh, members. It's not a uh, civil war. It's not a conflict between uh, so-and-so uh, ethnic groups. There is no uh, conflict of that kind. And uh, it is about restoring constitutional order and uh, rule of law in Ethiopia. Mm. You know, these two things are a prerequisite for a sustainable peace and development of Ethiopia and the region beyond. Absolutely. And obviously the region itself plays a, hu- a huge part. Ethiopia plays a huge part in terms of the region's stability and security as well, much like Kenya. And therefore peace is, is, is required for the country, for the region rather to be stable. You know, Ethiopia and Kenya underpin uh, stability in the Horn of Africa. This is a conflict infested region. Ethiopia is a home to over 110 million populations. It, 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 its location in the Horn of Africa is very strategic. We host over a million uh, refugees from our ne- neighboring countries far and near. We have deployed our boys and girls as peacekeeping troops in Somalia and, and other neighboring countries. So Ethiopia is very important. I would not be surprised if our friends and neighbors are really concerned about the ongoing development in Ethiopia. I'm sure they are, but I'm sure it's being handled. When we come back, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh A corridor that will open up the region. Uh, And we have been discussing a little bit about something quite difficult. That's the Tigray uh, uh, region. Uh, Obviously, uh, right now, making news for the wrong reasons. Uh, And, of course, uh, you've kind of broken it down for us in terms of, you know, how, um, you know, sort of left with no choice in this situation. Was there any dialogue that was requested by the Prime Minister to try and solve this problem prior to where it's gone now when you say that the, the law enforcement exercise that's happening in the region? Was, was the Prime Minister trying to sort the issue out with dialogue? Fred, there is no room for dialogue. Okay. The government has exhausted every peaceful avenue to resort and resolve the problem amicably through uh, reconciliations and uh, discussions as as one family, but that was uh, taken as a contempt uh, as 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 as, as um, being so uh, weak. Right. And now the issue is to bring those people to, not to negotiating table, but to bring them to justice. So, so uh, this is it. It, ha- it is this way now, and it will be sorted. I'm sure. Um, well, my, my prime minister has made it abundantly clear that. The avenue of peace have been squandered by the TPLF cliques. Now it is time for justice, which is very important for peace and development in Ethiopia. Sure, and 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 I'm I'm assuming that would be by by the you saying 110 million Ethiopians by the large part of the majority that would be the popular opinion to make sure this conflict is ended by any means necessary so that the country can move on. Yes, you know, you know the, the now in the last and the third and last phase of uh, the operations, and uh, we'll, we'll bring an end to this uh, scenario and turn our faces to development, which is a prerequisite of my government. Amazing. It's not only our neighbor. Right. Kenya has been with us in all our trying moments. Right. It hosts quite a good number of Ethiopians. Many of them have come empty-handed and have made millions in life, best Absolutely. life as well. So this is a great country, and I feel I'm at home. And you have some very good Ethiopian restaurants here as well. <laughs> it's true. I mean, it's, I mean, Nairobi, those areas of Kilimani, yes. Habesha, Habesha <laughs> areas where you see where Ethiopians live. And, yeah. uh, you know, this is one of uh, places in the world where Ethiopians live like the way they live in Addis Ababa without mm. looking at their back. Mm. Uh, you know, Ethiopians are peace, uh, peace-loving people, uh, law-abiding communities, and they respect uh, their host country. And they live like the way they live in Addis Ababa and Ethiopia. And we are grateful. Yeah. And Listen, it's been wonderful having you in studio with us this time. But yeah. the next time you come back, we'll talk about a, a number of other things. I just want to say that, um, and I said this off air, um, one of my most memorable trips work-wise and, vi- and, and any, any time I've visited a country has been my, my visit to Ethiopia. As I said, I've always felt like I was home there. Um, um, as a journalist, you, you hear horror stories of many African countries before you go there. Uh, yes, you have to get all the paperwork in order to go to most of them, but when you get to Ethiopia, when you clear customs and you're out there, it's just a wonderful, wonderful environment to work in, and I really enjoyed myself. Plus, the climate is perfect. I think that's another reason Ethiopians love Kenya, because I think Nairobi and Addis have almost an identical climate as well. Identical climate, and the same people I said, uh, one is the extension of the other. These yes. are one people living in two countries. Yes. Thank you so much for coming in My this morning. My pleasure. And we'll see you soon.
आई होप सो थैंक यू संत